Hello and welcome to our special interview in the run-up to this year's Dubai Air Show. Mark your calendars, it's taking place between the 17th to the 21st of November. My name's Amandeep and I'm delighted to be a part of the air show again and supporting with these online interviews, bringing you exclusive sneak previews with our key speakers. Today, I am beaming in from outer space and beaming in to us from London is Duncan Walker, CEO and co-founder of Skyports. He's also head of their Skyports infrastructure and the global operator of Heliports and Vertiports worldwide. We're going to get into all of that in just a moment. First of all, thank you, Duncan, for joining us. And I believe we met back in 2021 at the air show. So this is a wonderful reunion. That's right. It's been a long journey to get here, but we're on the verge of launching now. And uh, Dubai is very much part of that. It's going to be the first city in the world to launch. So we're really excited and the air show is the uh, the last one before permanent commercial operations. So we're going to see some exciting things happening there. As you say, an exciting synergy between Skyports, Dubai and that fantastic launch. For our audience who are unfamiliar with Skyports, let's hear in your words all about the operation and your role. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a whole new world of aviation. Um, this is electric uh, helicopters, call them. And, and we're helping um, create new taxi services, air taxi services for uh, the general public. So EV tolls, as they're called, are, are not a replacement for helicopters, which are the domain of the uh, rich and famous. This is a public transportation accessible to everybody. And specifically at Skyports, we build the infrastructure. So we call them vertiports. Think about them like heliports uh, for electric vehicles as well as helicopters. And as you mentioned there, Dubai is going to be the very first in the world to have this vertiport network. What makes this city perfect for this? And what does it mean behind the scenes? What's been going on to bring you up to speed with this part of the journey? Yeah, so this is a really good question. So we work in lots of cities around the world and lots have been vying to be first for this uh, this new mode of transportation. But Dubai is very much in the lead and we'll be launching commercial operations in Q1 next year. So just around the corner. There's a lot of things that make Dubai uh, fit for purpose here. I think the um, leadership and um, the engagement from all of the stakeholders have been absolutely critical. So it's complicated putting new public transportation infrastructure into any city around the world. There's a huge array of stakeholders and and people with um, engagement and opinions. And what we've seen in Dubai has been um, fabulous leadership from the very, very top, uh, sponsored by Sheikh Mohammed. And uh, that support has been really invaluable in making this work. It's allowed us to engage with uh, the regulator, the GCAA, the airspace navigation provider, the electrification company, DIWA, and the Road and Transport Authority, who are the convening body for all of this. Joby, the aircraft and, and operator, aircraft manufacturer and operator. And the number of stakeholders in, 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 and complexity that brings really requires that strong leadership and, and vision to, to be able to be implemented. So in that, in that sense, Dubai has been been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's also a city which sort of lends itself very neatly to advanced aero mobility. Um, what do you need for advanced aero mobility to be a success? Well, typically need quite congested cities because then you're providing a service which actually adds value to to the citizens. And um, in a way, Dubai has been victim of its own success. The population has grown very, very rapidly. The, the uh, um, city has expanded, um, which is fabulous. And, it, and it's a super exciting place to be but it's meant quite bad congestion um particularly Sheikh Zayed Road which I travel up and down quite a lot you know the traffic there is noticeably different year on year as the population and the success of Dubai grows so uh Dubai is um really focused on that and trying to solve some of those challenges and advanced air mobility is is part of that solution and Duncan it's really good to get your comprehensive insight there in terms of the infrastructure the stakeholders the regulators everything that's brought this vision that we heard about in 2021 at the air show now to a reality and with this upcoming air show we're really excited that you're going to be taking to the stage and giving us even more of an insight but for now for this taster interview put us in the position of the very first passenger who's going to be taking to the skies what's going to be what they look and feel like how's that journey going to be for them well this is going to be very exciting so uh come march next year the first public flights will happen um you may have seen in the press that the testing flights already commenced this summer um dubai is a a challenging operating environment it's very hot there's lots of sand so uh really important that that full testing regime has been in place and that continues all the way up to commercial launch 
commercial launch um, early next year is going to be um, really exciting. First anywhere in the world. So from a passing passenger perspective, you'll uh, arrive at Dubai International Airport Vertiport. Uh, that is well under construction. If you uh, travel to or from Dubai Airport as you're coming into the air show, you can see that opposite opposite the Emirates HQ. Um, construction happening 22 hours a day now, 23 hours a day, 150 people on site throughout the clock, uh, really accelerating very fast. The customer will, will turn up, have a, a really nice experience, um, either on the metro or in a taxi, be dropped off um, into a brand new terminal. There won't be many tickets and there won't be much visible security, although the security will very much be there. So you go through scanners um, as you would. But we work on the principle of zero touch, zero weight. So not like an airport, you're not hanging around for a long time. You're not having to sit in queues. They're very, very efficient using all uh, the modern technology available to us. So you'll cruise through the terminal. You won't hang about. Your vehicle will be ready for you. Joby will be sitting on the deck above you. We're straight up the lift to the third floor. The heli deck we're just at heli deck height now in the development so we can see it and it's very exciting and straight onto the joby uh, accompanied by our staff and the joby pilot and then joby will uh, whisk you away to marina which is the second node which will also be ready for uh, q1 next year and then we'll bolt on the other nodes being um, dubai mall and, and on the palm so we're building this network out quite quickly uh, you'll whiz across into marina and you'll be there in seven or eight minutes Duncan, you're a fantastic storyteller. Can you really put us into that position of what that first passenger is going to feel like? And I can't help but ask you a question that I asked you back in 2021. London being my home city, a wonderful urban place to live and travel and work in. Now, why Dubai over London for the very first commercial flight, the very first Vertiport network in the world? Yeah, it's a great question. So I started this business in London and, and I'm a Londoner grow up here and my passion was to start this in 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 london an area i know well it has the same congestion problems that, that a lot of cities around the world have and we spent a lot of years sort of in in all sorts of far-flung places in los angeles and in new york and in dubai and in japan and korea and singapore and you know lots of these places will will uh, adopt advanced aero mobility but the, the 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 clear leader has become dubai and i think it goes back to that um political leadership so you know everywhere we go we do the simple things you've got to look for political and economic stability okay check good but lots of places have that which is which is great the next is who is going to be the champion and you know, like I say, London was was my passion, but I was trying to count up. We had a new aviation minister again. I was trying to count up how many aviation ministers we've had since we've been doing this. And I think we're up to seven or eight. And that doesn't help when you're trying to corral lots and lots of stakeholders and lots of different opinions and, you know, all valid opinions. But ultimately, you need that vision and you need that direction and you need that can do attitude, which we see in Dubai. You know, it's it's, it's amazing to develop in Dubai. And the, the the attitude is not looking for things that will stop, but looking for things which can help move forward. And, you know, there's always challenges in everything we do. But you know, Dubai has been able to unlock a lot of them quite quickly because it's had that vision and that leadership. So it's been a great, a great place to work. And like I said earlier, you know, we're building round the clock. That doesn't happen in many places. And it's really good to have that comparison there, just because I think in your answer, there's so many lessons that can be learned about urban air mobility and taking what you're doing here in the UAE as a blueprint and hopefully kind of spreading that across the world. Congestion is an issue that affects many, many big urban cities. Now, when it comes to collaboration and the stakeholders involved, again, it's really good to get your insight. Collaborating and bringing you on stage at the Dubai Air Show is a fantastic coup for the organizers. So we're very pleased that you'll be joining us. What are some of the sneak previews that you'll be able to share with us when you take to the stage this November? Yeah, like I said at the very start, this is the, the most exciting air show. I mean, I've been to air shows for, for years now and, and every year we see incremental growth. This is the last one anywhere in the world, I think, before first commercial launch. So endlessly we've been talking about air shows with nice cgis and fancy videos now we're talking about reality you know this is absolutely real um i hope we'll see the vehicles flying at the air show um which will be great and that really brings it all to life so look we're, we're now talking about what are the practical steps to 
permanent commercial implementation. We're not talking about the theory of where a vertiport should be or what it should look like or how we should deal with fire safety. A lot of those questions have been answered now. So we're talking about how do we engage with the customers? How do we provide a service to the customers which is meaningful to them? What does the ticket price look like? What does the journey look like? How do we ensure we have the right security but ensure we have a perfect customer service which Dubai is very well known for? So, you know, these are real life uh, challenges we're working with now and real life opportunities. And, you know, I think there'll still be a long way to go in terms of learning. And we will take a lot from, from what we learned in the first few years of operations in Dubai, and that will help dictate how we expand the network. It will help dictate how customers interface um, with the app and with the vehicle. So, you know, this is this is the start line, not the finish line for sure. And Duncan, of course, we know that you're going to be on stage with us. I believe it's on the 19th of November. You're going to be part of a session which is called Dubai's Air um, Aviation Vision Mobility Driving Partnerships for the Future of Mobility. Now, we followed your successful journey since 2021, personally, since we met then. What would you encourage um, our audience to take away with them in terms of the value of attending air shows like the Dubai Air Show? Um, what would you say would be the kind of the, the big takeaway of an in-person experience in comparison to what most businesses done online these days? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think it, it, it's funny. The vehicles we're talking about are, are amazing to see fly. Um, air shows are the only place in the world where you want the fastest, loudest, sort of most exciting aircraft. And you see the tornadoes and the fast jets and, the, you know, they're great. And then you see the OEMs fly. You see Joby and Archer and Beta and all the others. And it's amazing in its silence. And that's the whole purpose, right? You go and, you know, part of the part of the big value proposition in 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 these vehicles is they're, of course, safe. That's, that's, a, that's a must. But price points more accessible to more people. And they're very, very quiet. So they're not impacting cities in the way that helicopters might. And um, the only way you know, I've spent years convincing governments and cities, you know, these aren't going to be noisy. They're not going to be impactful. This is going to help, you know, genuine everyday people, not just the oligarchs. And it's very hard to do that without a proof point. Um, and now we have the opportunity to see the proof point. And you know, I, I really recommend coming to see these vehicles fly because it changes your perspective. You know, they go past and sometimes you don't even know they're there. And that's, that's amazing. Like I say, an air show is quite an a funny environment for them to fly because you, know, you see these fast jets with fire coming out the back of them and that's what it's all about. And then you see these things cruising past absolutely silent and it's incredible. You're right. It's such an incredible experience. And again, hats off to the organizers for pulling this off every single time. Any parting words for our audience before we let you get back to the very exciting business of creating that vision to reality? I think this is, this is, this is, the opportunity right this is the last time we're going to see these as theoretical vehicles and not knowing what they're like in real life the next time the dubai air show or paris or london or singapore we will have an absolute proof point and so this is uh, this is really moving from theory and frankly it's taken way longer than we all thought certainly longer than i thought but here we are and uh and it's super exciting and i think you know if you, if you are coming in and, and, and people are coming to visit the air show Drive past the uh, drive past the vertiport. You can see it. It's real. It's amazing construction, and it will help bring flavour and life and reality to what what we're uh, what we're talking about. Duncan, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for being a firm friend of the Dubai Air Show, but also being integral to the progress of the UAE. It really works because of this international collaboration with our Emirati community here, and as you say, all of the various stakeholders involved. And you're a fantastic champion for the air show itself. So a reminder to our audience, mark your calendars between the 17th to the 21st of November. And Duncan himself, as I said, he's on stage on the 19th of November for the Dubai's Air um, Advanced Mobility uh, Conversation, Driving Partnerships for the Future of Mobility on the 19th of November. You'll be able to see Duncan Walker, as you see, a very approachable gentleman. So you'll have a chance to hear him on stage and approach him with your burning questions as well. And on that note, we really look forward to welcoming you, Duncan, and your team in person, welcoming our audience. And in between now and then, keep yourself, uh, keep an eye on our website for more updates and continue to reach for the stars.